Colin Furs! I am so excited that you finished your hand dug tuttle. That is so cool! I am going to uh, be going over some options you have. I'm a professional engineer, mechanical engineer, so I uh, know a lot of different ways to do what you want to do with the car lift slash storage slash parking system. Uh, but there are lots of options, so I want to just give you some background on what you can do. So the basic idea is you want to decouple. You've got three problems. You've got your hatch, you've got your lift, and you've got your rotation. And ideally, you want to decouple all three of those. If you want it to be super cool, you can couple them all together and have a combined solution, but it's easier to solve them separately. And then if you want to combine them later, you can. So uh, for the lift, you can, like you said, do a scissor lift. You could also do an arm lift on the wall. They sell like commercial car lifts. That would be the, the most straightforward solution, but you don't want a straightforward solution. You want something that's awesome. So one thing you could do is a, a counter lift arm. So you've got a, an arm that sticks out and then it's got a big old counterweight on one side. And then you could have a down winch. So a winch that pulls it down instead of pulling it up. And uh, that way, if the winch fails, It'll, you'll always be able to get your car out. You won't be able to get your car back in, but you'll be able to get it out because you have a counterweight that'll that'll lift it up for you. Uh, you could also tune it exactly right. One of the things in, in engineering is you don't solve the general solution, you solve the specific solution. You get the specific solution for the specific problem you have. So if you've got a specific vehicle, such as the DeLorean, then you can tune this counterweight exactly so that you can just lift it by hand. So then you don't even have to do anything. You just drive it on there and then you just push it down and it just slides down perfectly. It'd be awesome. So uh, and then you don't need anything powered. It's just it's you know just by by hand. Uh, the other thing is the so that's that's an option. There are lots of different options for how you can move that up and down sideways or whatever. Um, but I would recommend something like that with a counterweight on it because that way you're uh, you're not relying on the power systems as much. And if you do want to, you can always have it go faster with power or or whatever. But uh, using a counterweight is is pretty sweet. Uh, for the hatch, you have got a couple options. Basically, you can do it hinged or or vertical motion. A hinged is simpler. It's going to be way easier to design that because then it just, it's like a door lying on its side, right? It just hinges up. And again, you could put a counterweight inside so that when you lift that up, then the counterweight goes down and then you could just open it by hand. Again, you're not stuck. The power's out or whatever. Uh, straight lift could be cool. If you park a car on top of it, you could make it so it lifts the car up. So then you don't have to clear that space to get anything out. So, you know, anything that's sitting on top there, just lift it up in the air. Uh, you'd have to be careful, of course, if it's parked one on one and one on the other, you know, it'll tip it over and that'd be bonkers. But uh, straight lift could be neat. Hinge is going to be simpler. And again, you could do a straight lift with a counterweight if you want to. Uh, you could do it like a pulley system or whatever. But uh, I recommend not coupling this to this. I, I would keep them separate. If you want to keep them, you know, together, that'd be fine. You could put some arms on the on the lift that'll lift this up. But I, re I seriously recommend making sure that this is seated by itself so that you can take a load off the lift when it's not in use because you don't want this sitting on the lift the whole time. And that would just be crazy. Uh, the other thing is the rotation. So uh, like I said in the comment, I would recommend putting the rotation separately and on the on the surface. So you drive your car in, because then you've got all the space on the surface to rotate it around. You don't have to worry about hitting the walls of the, the cave or whatever. Um, so I would, I would put that up there. Again, options, manual versus automatic. Automatic, I would just use a, an excavator slewing ring. I mean, a, you know, they, they sell those commercially. They've got a hydraulic rotator in them already and you just, bolt it on to whatever plate you want to put the car on and, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, if you want to do it manually, which again, it's really nice if you wanted to be able to do it by hand, and especially with the rotation, rotation's easy because you don't, you're not lifting anything up and down, it's just spinning around. So I would keep it manual. If it was me, I would, I would make the rotation manual. Uh, and I would just do that with a, a Lazy Susan kind of bearing. So you'd have like a, a set of wheels you know, on a ring that rotate around. And then you've just got a, a plate that rests on that and you just spin it around. It'd, it'd be easy. And make that ring small enough that it sits on the, the surface of the um, of the lift. Or you could make it larger. You could make it off the side of the lift and, and uh, you know, have a larger area for rotating it. And then uh, you know, just have it cut so that it only goes up and down on, on one part of it. So anyway, those are some options. Uh, I'm sure you've got lots of people giving you advice, but uh, those are my suggestions. And uh, if you'd like some help designing it, I'd be happy to help.